attempt the search for truth in the environment that one lives. Because when we look within ourselves, we see that we have this negative side, but we also see that there is this other side that is there, very weak perhaps, that emerges from time to time. So that weak part that we call essence, if you like, that it doesn't show up so much, because this negativity can be overwhelming. If you just check the number of thoughts you had today, you will see by yourselves how many of them have been of a negative kind. So we are looking into these different egos because they are part of our subconscious. That means they are this part that is, I mean, brewing continuously within us. Although we think we are in charge of ourselves and that we live our lives and we decide for everything, we definitely do. But often what happens is that these egos, they have their own agendas. They have their own cravings, their own ideas about them, you see? So each of these egos have their own, if you like, criteria in relation to themselves and the way people should treat them. So we, by doing the Gnostic work, you begin to see the way this ego operates. Why does it behave in this manner and how? and we free ourselves from it. And when we are angry, for example, the same thing, if something goes wrong and we get angry, but why did we get angry in the first place? Okay, it's wrong, it's broken. Why do I get angry? It's done. Why do I get angry? Can I just solve this problem? Can I look for a solution and just leave it there? Why does this anger need to appear? and go around and regurgitate the whole situation and blame and, I mean, say things and react and so on and so forth. Why? Because these egos, in every event, as it's taking place, and as we enact their emotions, their feelings, their, and believe their thoughts, they take energy from us. So if there was a situation and we dealt that situation with anger, what will happen is that in another situation similar to this one, we will be angrier. Anger has gone, has got a further grip on us. So in another situation, if in this one we were just controlling ourselves, in the other one we'll blast. We will be calling names or, you know, or scream or attack because this ego with this from situation to situation gets strengthened and that's how you will see that people are over a period of time they deteriorate further and further they become more miserable they become more bitter more angry why because those situations that have emerged these egos have come in and and enslave them further, had a further grip on them. Then, in the end, they are just continuously irritated. Anything irritates them. You talk to them, irritates them. You don't talk to them, irritates them as well. You know, it's like you can't deal with that person because that ego that that person has is looking from every situation to get a bit of irritation. You see? So, there is so many things that you can look into this. But the good news is that we can get rid of this. We can change. We can transform ourselves. We can free ourselves from anger. We can free ourselves from these negative emotions, negative feelings, despite the situation might have gone wrong or whatever might have been the situation. You look at it and inside you are in peace. If today we discover that we are angry, well, from today we are going to work was being less and less and less angry people. When you observe, and this, there is a technique for this, we call the technique of self-observation. Self-observation means 
to be able to see inside. See, that means when the si a situation is happening, let's say you get a phone call and someone says, look, this situation that you asked me to do didn't work or whatever, and such and such did the opposite. And you are listening to it and you are already feeling this volcano erupting of anger about to say something, but you are seeing it. You can see the thoughts that you are about, you know, to verbalize it. And you can see that these thoughts, what they want is to snap at this person, punish that person for doing the wrong thing. But this person, it wasn't even this person's fault, let's say. It was due to the machine that broke or whatever. But you still want to find an scapegoat. You still want to punch someone, somebody. At that moment, you see the thoughts, how craftily the ego of anger is producing them. And you are about to say it, but because you've seen what this ego wants, it wants to hurt this person that has given you that news. And instead of saying it, you don't. Because you realize those thoughts are not yours. Those thoughts belong to that psychological aspect in you, if you like, entity in you, called anger. And you say, okay, thanks. We'll sort it out later on. And you need to know that those thoughts do not belong to you. And by you seeing them, you will see, you will understand what they really want to do. And by, by not going along with them, then they are weakened. And you get, get control of yourself. That means you are gaining grounds of actually being able to behave without this compelling ways of thinking, feeling and acting. And you will see, in with that self-observation, as soon as you see a thought and emotion, you don't go along with it. That emotion, that feeling, that thought will get weakened and go away. And you come back to the present moment. You remain in the present moment, like the way you, you just come back, feel, listen, see, begin to breathe and perceive yourself alive. And you know the thought that comes, don't go along with that, come back to the moment. And that's how we achieve the peace of the spirit within. You can look further into this in the, in the sec of second chapter of the book, The Peace of the Spirit Within by Belzebub, chapter 2. And you can also look into The Great Rebellion, uh, the book from the founder of modern Gnosis, Samuel Aumbeor. Um, in the chapters about egos and the beloved egos, the many selves and the beloved egos.